so um, hi. So we've got uh, two new faces at the Guy Centers here on the CYM. I'm Stefan Asmus. Hey. And, um, yeah. I'm um, the co author of the um, graphics application that comes bundled with Haiku Wonderbrush. And uh, the other author is Ingo, right now it's in front. And um, well, Wonderbrush hasn't uh, seen any updates in recent years. I think I think it was six years ago was the last update. <laughs> 2006 could be all right. And um, yeah, I think the last change I did was to disable the key, the key file um, <laughs> support uh, to unlock Wonderbrush for Haiku. And um, well, basically, I've been um, just set of, just satisfied with uh, some of the deficiencies in Wonderbrush, some of the limitations, and um, I've always uh, had these ideas how, how it could work better and how it could uh, be more flexible. Um, these uh, limitations are basically the Wonderbrush first version, maybe I just um, launch it. I should say, I should warn you, I'm completely unprepared. Um, <laughs> as always, I, as always I've, um, I've worked, um, instead of working on this presentation, I've uh, tried to squeeze in as much new features as possible for uh, until the begeistered. <laughs> so, and uh, even last night and today, I've tried to fix a bug with Ingo. And uh, I haven't quite fixed it, so um, you might see it crash. <laughs> and um, that's just, uh, basically this this new version of Wonderbrush is just a prototype. It's just um, uh, I've tried to pull in old features from the original Wonderbrush and allow the code and new way of doing things in the new Wonderbrush. And um, there's still bugs in there, and it's it's incomplete, undo doesn't work, it's basically just a demonstration of um, how, how things could evolve. So anyways, back to the original Wonderbrush. Um, you see the original Wonderbrush already has a lot of tools, and when you see the new Wonderbrush, you will see there's only three, <laughs> and, and both even don't do very much. And another thing that the, uh, the original Wonderbrush lacked was um, support for nested layers. Um, these layers are basically a flat list from here. You can, you can create new layers um, and you just give this list of layers and on the layers you have objects and if I, um, if I paint something, um, this is going to be a um, different objects on this layer here and um, I can nest these objects. And there's no support for layer transformations. You can you can pick multiple objects and transform them, but you can like pick the layer they are on and transform just the layer and all this sort of stuff. And um, basically, for some compositing tasks, it's very difficult to work with this flat layer tree because, um, for example, if you have a masking layer, the mask applies to all the layers below it. You can't just have like move this onto a separate. Um, branch of the layer tree and have the mask only apply to that branch of the tree. So um, that was one thing. And the other thing is, um, well basically, um, Wonderbrush is totally single-threaded. Um, I think it loads images in a second thread and that's about it. Um, if the rendering becomes expensive, like you have a blur filter, or multiple blur fil filters on, on layers, and um, the object list needs to be re rendered because maybe um, what you can do is uh, you, can, you can still move these brush paints like objects, and then I can, um, for example, assign a different color to this um, object and we'll repaint the layer from the bottom up. And obviously, if I have a large number of objects and uh, change something very much to the bottom towards the bottom and you need to repaint everything on top. And um, that becomes very expensive and um, well 
but it's still reacting fluently like here, there's no problem, but um, maybe I just add an um, expensive lower filter here and um, give it an eye. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's really expensive or not, but um, I already see that it's following the mouse very jerkily, even if there's only two objects. And, um, it's basically because the UI freezes until the layer is re rendered. Mm -hmm. So this were the biggest um, the biggest drawbacks um, that, that I wanted to fix in the view one approach. I wanted to have multi threaded rendering that works completely um, on its own and the UI should be updating through. And the other was the layer tree you can see here. One of supports different layers and they have a, um, a transformation. It's not presented in a nice way, but um, the, the actual technique already works. And um, I can uh, move objects into different layers. And another thing that you can see is that the, this transformation box follows my mouse completely smoothly, mm -hmm. even though the actual rendering um, takes a lot of time and updates at different frequencies. Um, and this part of the presentation was already two years ago, or maybe three, I don't know, already presented the prototype that the previous guys said. And um, the sad thing is that not much has changed since then. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <coughs> this presentation is mostly about the new features, and it's going to be a short presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this was just to um, give you a little refresher on, on what's to be expected in the Wonder Bush. Um, another thing that I wanted to address with um, the new prototype is the, um, the quality of the rendering. The old Wonderbrush used um, eight bits per color channel um, bitmap data on each layer. What it did do is that it, if, you, if it did some blending, and converted this a pixel, a source pixel, into a linear gamma space. Did the blending operation and then converted it back into a nonlinear kind of space, so this display um, space. And that's often a bit expensive to do all the time, and it's slowing down the rendering. And it comes with artifacts because if you use precision and you convert back to a nonlinear um, 8 bit per pixel color space. This new prototype uses an internal color space format that is completely independent from the, from the display. And it's uh, 16 bit per, per channel and linear comes. So all the blending works correctly. In one rush, not all the blending works correctly. If, if, if it blends different layers, it will work correctly, or different objects even. But for example, some uh, filters don't work in the linear space, and that gives you a certain type of artifacts. And um, yeah, and the new features. Um, I think I'm not quite sure that the last time I presented the prototype, I didn't have a brush tool. I am absolutely certain I didn't have the, the color up there, that you couldn't change um, colors. And, um, and now you can uh, switch to the brush tool and pick a different color, and uh, you can change the brush settings. And um, it all works pretty nicely. Uh, even under support for that, I worked a lot on, on the uh, transformation tool with help from Ingo because I'm not good at math. <laughs> and and uh, you know, the transformation tool is, is working neatly, but the, the, the challenge here was that the objects are <coughs> inheriting the transformation of the parent layer and um, have all this working correctly, uh, figuring, figuring the, the, the zoom of the, the canvas. And, yeah, for example, this object here is transformed. Um, another thing that you might notice is that um, I don't know if any of you worked with the original Wonder Brush, but um, in a lot of ways, uh, sets strict paths of working with it, interacting with the application. For example, you have to pick your object in the layer list. You can just click on it on the canvas, even if you see it right there, and um, sort of try to make it intuitive by um, making it work much, much more flexible. With the transform tool, um, 
you have these, these hotspots, of course. You have the hotspot for rotation and hotspots for these um, edges and corners and everything. But if you click far enough outside the, the, the original uh, box, then you pick another object. And you can just click, uh, drag, and it's much easier to work with. And, um, yeah, and another new feature is the text tool. Um, if any of you work with the original WonderBrush, there's this. Basically, it's kind of hard to work with the text tool. You, um, it supports one type, typeface for the whole object, and it does support different layouts like um, justified layer, left adjusted, right adjusted, centered, and all this. Um, and you have to enter the text in this little area here. Is this the WonderBrush one here? If I do a text object here, um, uh, basically you have a size for the whole for the whole text, and you can probably uh, make it um, justify it. And that all works, but. Um, Just was giving us a hard time here. This is a really old version of Haiku. And um, yeah, um, basically you can't um, change the style of just the range of the text, right? And you can't edit the right on the canvas. And with the new one brush, um, you change that so you have this text tool and you can just click into the text and you can right there and use the cursor um, mm -hmm. keys and, and, um, and the new text. And as you see, um, it has uh, support for the color. You can um, support all the usual editing, um, ah. editing features. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it is <laughs> um, you can you can apply um, different fonts to, to the style range. <coughs> you can change the size, just the style range. You can, um, for example, select here and then change the size. Then and we'll change, keep the fonts they're different and change just the size. It will all work when it's transformed as well. You can go back to the text tool, it keeps the selection, I can add a text like this, transformed. Yeah, and it's basically much more flexible. Can you paste from the style did it? No, it doesn't support copy and paste at the moment. And it's not, it doesn't react to it. So you, you can because there's still this support with the um, yeah, with the editing, but we have a from the yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can paste into that, and um, obviously it's just work to paste by the different So it's just not something that we can. Yeah, and basically that's it. <laughs> that's the new features. Brush <laughs> <laughs> uh, tool and text tool. Yeah, and um, I keep having like, some. Ideas how um, what kind of nice features I would like to see in Monobrush, and uh, I'll write them down. But uh, basically, there's little time to actually work on them. But since Ingo um, started with the cute part, which is uh, you don't you want to demonstrate? Either? No. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that much. Um,